In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Okay, Chaplain's Report today. Um, I love this passage. I really do. And the reason that I do is because there are certain passages in God's Word that are very straightforward. And while the message in them is very powerful, they're a little less layered than others. But being the sort of philosophical guy that I am, I've always really liked passages that you can draw several different lessons from them. And it's not that they're contradictory. They all work in, synch uh, in, in perfect synchronization. There's a synergy that, that comes from them. But this is one of those passages. There's so many different layers upon layers that you can draw from it because the Word of God is inexhaustible. The Word of God is definitely the work of something a human mind could have just never conceived. Some of the ways that there are multiple lessons and some passages only make sense when, uh, or make more sense when you cross-reference it with, with others. And that's the reason that biblical study has always been something that fascinated me is because it's really a look into the mind of God and his infinite wisdom that you can constantly draw new messages out of even the same passage. And this passage is no different. Now, for this, we look to the love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13. You're probably familiar with it, even if you're not someone that's very well-versed in the scripture, because you hear this passage at weddings all the time. You know, love does not seek its own, that kind of thing. And so after that, after that part where Paul is describing Christian love and the way that we're supposed to love one another, he goes into this part, which on its surface seems a little out of place, but I think reading it, you'll be able to see how it plays into this concept of love and godly love that Paul is talking about. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 11. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. Now this is a truly awesome piece of scripture, and part of the reason for that is because it has so many layers so much wisdom that we can extrapolate out of it. The first layer is maturity. That one's pretty obvious. Paul is giving us an understanding of what it is like to mature spiritually and physically. And he's drawing an analogy between a Christian spiritual walk and the natural physical growth of a child into a man. And he's using his own life as part of an example for this. So what Paul says here is that when you're a kid, there are certain behaviors that are acceptable. There are certain behaviors that we tolerate that we would never tolerate out of, a, out of an adult. And that's one of the reasons that a pretty good parenting strategy that I've seen other people use, because of course I'm not a parent myself, is, hey, act your age. Because it calls us to behave in a manner that we understand is more similar to a more mature person than us. It calls us to a higher standard of behavior. There are certain things that we'll certainly tolerate in a two-year-old that we would never tolerate from a 20-year-old, and we shouldn't, because there is a higher expectation because that person should have accrued more maturity than a two-year-old by that point. And so because of that, there are certain behaviors in the Christian life that would be understandable and acceptable for someone who wasn't very familiar with the Word of God yet, who is just starting on this journey of repentance and really transforming themselves and sanctifying their lives. There are some things that are acceptable or even not necessarily acceptable, but certainly understandable for somebody that's very young in the faith. But at a certain point, we're supposed to mature past that. We're supposed to grow out of those spiritually immature sort of childish ideas that we have. 
And this is something that Paul is trying to make very clear here. He's saying that I put away these childish things when I became a man. And there are certain problems that you guys in Corinth are having that you are more mature than this, or at least should be by this point. And because of that, some of these practices that you engaged in as a very young church filled with a lot of young Christians, you guys have to mature. You have to be better than this by this point. And so this is really the message that he's given. You know, it reminds me of a great joke by Jeff Foxworthy, where he said, uh, I have these friends that think their kid is going to be the the next super genius in the world because he stands out in the backyard and yells, airplane, airplane. And I said to him, well, good gracious, he's 14 years old. <laughs> so that's kind of the same thing. There is That would be impressive for a really young child. But if you've got a 14-year-old doing it, that is really not what you should be looking for for somebody that has acquired that age. And in the same sense, the reason that Paul is talking about love here is that he's saying, hey, you guys should have moved into a more mature version of love. You guys should have moved into a more godly style of love to where you're not dealing with all these petty differences and the infighting with one another, and you're less focused on the stuff that doesn't matter and more focused on your worship, more focused on your unity with one another. You guys should have matured past this point by now. And then there's the second layer, which is maturing in that love. Because love and relationships, they almost take on a life of their own. Your relationship between a person, especially somebody that you're close to, should also mature as it goes on. Not just your love as an individual and the love that you're able to show each other, but also the relationship itself should grow and evolve and become better and closer the longer you engage in it. Because even somebody that has a very mature love once you take on the responsibility of a relationship, and I'm not talking necessarily romantic, I'm talking about parent, child, I'm talking about just your friends or brothers in Christ. Even if you're really good and have a very mature love, developing that relationship is going to take time. And so because of that, he talks about a second layer that, this second layer of understanding that once we have established a relationship with somebody, the relationship itself is also supposed to mature and grow. Because this is the reason really you'll see old married couples versus childhood sweethearts. Um, You know, if, if you're in high school and you're dating somebody, you tend to let the little things get to you. And this is understandable because you're somebody that's new to relationships and the relationship itself is very new as well. And so you're going to hit a lot of roadblocks and hiccups and it's not going to be as fulfilling as for example, a married couple that has been with each other for a really long time. And so this maturing of the relationship itself is something that Corinth had a struggle with because the people at Corinth were not engaging their brothers and sisters in Christ in a way that was productive or a way that they should. Because they were so focused on their spiritual gifts, things like prophecy and speaking in tongues, that they were ignoring the spiritual growth they were supposed to be experiencing from that. They were ignoring their own spiritual growth. They were ignoring the understanding of the prophecy that they were giving rather than the fact that they could prophesy. They were so focused on the gift, they forgot to look at the benefit that the gift gave them and that it was supposed to make them more spiritually mature. And they were so focused on having the ability itself that they forgot to understand what the gift was put there to teach them. And that was really tragic. And then you have this third layer, that maturity brings foresight. You see, one of the things that Paul mentions earlier is that love suffereth long. In other words, love has a lot of patience. And the reason for that is that a mature love and a mature Christian has some foresight. He understands that what is in front of him at every second of every day is not necessarily all that important if you're not looking at it from the big picture, if you're not looking at how it's going to affect the future. And this is part of the reason that he gives this analogy. He says right before he goes into verse 11, he says, We know prophecy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. 
So he's saying, yeah, prophecy is a great thing, but you're forgetting that we're going to hit a time eventually where the prophecy doesn't matter because the thing that we were prophesying about has come. And because of that, you need to be focused on what the prophecy is trying to teach you more so than the prophecy itself. Because at some point, everything on this earth is going to be done away with. Everything that we've built, everything that we've done, it's all going to be gone. And none of that is going to matter if we haven't done what we were supposed to do in relation to God. If we haven't fulfilled our spiritual duties to our Savior and our Father, then it really doesn't matter what we do here on earth. You see, love is supposed to grant us a certain foresight. Our love for God is supposed to help us understand that we need to do things that please Him because eventually he's going to be the only thing left. And our relationship with him is going to matter more than anything else. Couples that have been at it for a long time, like I used in the analogy right before, an old married couple, you'll see that sometimes they do things to work on the relationship because they know if they don't work on it now, they know from experience that they're going to experience troubles later on. They do things to avoid trouble and to strengthen the relationship now so that they're not in crisis mode when something big happens later. And so that maturity and that maturity in love does bring foresight. So that's the third layer. And you see, that's the reason that it works so well with his analogy of adults and children. Children are very impulsive, and they really don't think much further than five seconds into the future and what they're going to be doing then. Adults, they have to plan for the future. That's why they work because they know eventually I'm going to get hungry and need a place to sleep, so I've got to work now so I can put off worrying about that kind of stuff later. We sacrifice the future for what's going on now. Or we, sorry, we sacrifice now for what's going to happen in the future. We sacrifice what we'd like to be doing now, which is sitting at home eating cheese puffs and watching TV, and instead we go to work because we know that we're going to need to prepare for our future at some point. And so we sacrifice right now so that we can be better in the future. And that's what a spiritually mature person does. They realize it's not all about them and what they want. They realize what it is about is God and his kingdom and doing the best that we can to establish his kingdom here on earth. And that's going to be better for us and for everybody else. And more importantly, it's what God wants. And so that spiritual maturity does bring foresight. Growing up isn't easy. But the thing is, we have to be willing to leave some things behind. We have to be willing to leave behind our old sinful lifestyle. We have to be willing to leave behind some of our own wants and desires that aren't even necessarily bad per se. But we forego them because we realize the work that God has asked us to do is just more important. And that's really something I want you to think about throughout this weekend and throughout the next week. That if we're going to have this strong, godlike, mature love that Paul calls us, call, calls us to have, we have to put away childish things. Stay the course, friends. <laughs>